We are ninjas, we are turtles, we are heroes, sing our song. We are ninjas, we are brothers, we're united and we're strong. We are ninjas, we are turtles. We are heroes, and, and this, this is, is our song. song. Are you ready? Let's go. The Legend of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Part 1, Chapter 60, Michelangelo Written and performed by Joseph Chambers and based on the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic books created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. Leonardo and Michelangelo reached the TCRI building at two o'clock and Leonardo, unlike Raphael before him, had planned most of the escapade. Leonardo and Michelangelo began by hiding up a tree until two guards passed and jumped from the tree before taking out the guards by grabbing their outstretched fists from where they had begun to punch them and hurling them to the ground by twisting rapidly. After taking their security cards to get into the building, they realised it was possible for the warehouse to be open and that everyone was working night shifts. For about two to three seconds, Leonardo and Michelangelo simply stood at the door, too shocked to move, and nobody noticed the new arrivals. Then one chubby male worker pointed directly at the door and screamed. Leonardo quickly slammed the door and decided going straight in was too risky after all. Problem? Michelangelo asked loudly in Leonardo's ear. Leonardo jumped a good metre into the air with shock and very nearly sliced Michelangelo in half with his drawn katanas. Please don't do that again, Leonardo begged with intense frustration. Sorry, dude, Michelangelo muttered with stupendous discomfort. OK, if we can't go through, what other options do we have? Leonardo asked his brother. Oh, well, no, God, OK, Michelangelo expressed purely out of the shock of being consulted about the plan. He had seen in a film something like this. Was it try going either over or under? Was that the answer? He was not sure. His brother had now been expecting him to answer for 30 seconds and seemed to be growing bored. Michelangelo, instead of risking sounding stupid with a potentially wrong answer, decided to go for goofy humour that may annoy, but would at least not let anyone down. You could kill me, and then as a ghost I could try going through the walls, Michelangelo giggled nervously. Useless as ever, Leonardo mumbled. Michelangelo chose to ignore this. After a brief talk about double-checking the safety on their grappling hooks, they carefully ascended the wall. This was going very well and both boys seemed competent in climbing. It was then a great shock when a great and blinding light smothered the boys. Leonardo flinched and kept going, but Michelangelo instinctively used one of his arms to cover his eyes and his grip on the rope slipped. Mikey! Leonardo yelled pointlessly as his brother plummeted down and down. By this point they were two stories up and although Michelangelo's fall could have only lasted half a second, to Michelangelo it felt far less and to Leonardo it felt like more than a minute. He seemed to fall with no plan to try and recover the fall. He landed with both legs slamming into the concrete sidewalk. It was dark and although conscious, Michelangelo could not feel or see any of his wounds. One leg had taken all the impact and the bone had splintered. The other leg had scraped along the path underneath him and had been grated and skinned severely. Michelangelo was in so much shock from the pain he forgot to scream to tell his brother that he was still alive and conscious. Leonardo raced to meet him, sliding down the rope like a fireman's pole and trying to disregard the strongly stinging rope burns this gave him to both hands. The ground seemed to be covered in darkness and it was only when Leonardo came to it that he realised the darkness was moving. I, uh, 
come in peace? Leonardo tried panicking. No, you have come here to die, one of the sea of ninjas bellowed. Sorry, Leo, I'd get up, but I can't feel my legs, Michelangelo uttered. Leonardo turned and saw the glittering teal blood which was illuminating Michelangelo. And I'm sorry for bringing you here, Leonardo mumbled, drawing his swords in defence. Please, if you let us go, you'll be doing the honourable thing. This isn't a fair fight. My brother is hurt. He's only 11 years old. T Twelve next month and so are you, Michelangelo weakly mumbled. Yes, you will be. Leonardo's face darkened with those final words. He thrust his left leg back and pushed his weight onto his front foot. He was ready for war. All the ninjas seemed to come at once. Leonardo stood over his brother and fiercely protected him, much like a guard dog would its owner's property. Michelangelo's vision was blurred with tears of pain, but no matter how much he wanted to be able to sleep, he stayed awake. He had to help, despite not being able to move or see that clearly. He was effectively blind and paralysed. He could hear Leonardo struggling desperately, but his body would not let him do anything, and all the will in Mikey's soul would not cure him for now. All the while, Leonardo had begun to carefully but hurriedly spin on the spot with his swords outstretched, and then, after 720 degrees worth of this, he thrust his swords forward and outwards in an arm movement similar to a butterfly stroke. Leonardo was cautious of two things whilst he did this. One, he made sure to have his sword edges facing away from the ninjas so as not to seriously hurt them. Two, he made sure not to step on Michelangelo, who was still whimpering and making occasional unsuccessful attempts to sit up. Leo was then swift to bundle his brother over his head, supporting only his torso and head so as not to damage his legs further, and then he simply ran, his powerful legs propelling him forwards despite the incredible resistance from every ninja. They snagged, sliced, beat, bruised, cut and tendered whatever part of Leonardo they could reach. But he let them. He failed to care. He just kept going, determined not to stop until he was home. Determined not to stop until Michelangelo was safe once more.